Hi all. We had a really good debate on one of the previous videos about kids getting stronger. And in that video I'd asked you a question, the YouTube audience. And because I really liked the debate, I'm going to ask you a different question now. How could IBM's Deeper Blue computer play a human move in this position? This was in the IBM Man Machine match of 1997. It was in round two, and Kasparov was playing black, and he'd reached quite a difficult position. White has managed to um, gain pressure on the A-file with his rooks, and also the queen on F2 is threatening this invasive queen B6, where it can try and materialistically win the B5 pawn. As it turned out, the computer, to Kasparov's shock and horror, didn't play queen B6. Kasparov had apparently prepared a continuation which um, would have given him some drawing chances. The computer, to his horror, actually played a different move, and I wonder if you can spot it. I'll give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, it wasn't a tactical move which you'd expect for computers. Um, it was actually bishop e4. So with bishop e4, the computer's using a Nimzovician blockade strategy. He's blockading the e pawn, so black can't try and liberate the position with e4 and generate, you know, some threats like queen e5. Not only that, the computer has avoided going in for this queen b6 variation. Let's have a quick look at this queen b6 variation with the help of modern Ribka analysis. So bishop c7 say, and now it seems, you know, with queen e6, this is going to be better for white because um, black will have to give the exchange on a2. And now white can use this a file to try and win this b5 pawn. For example, in this variation, Rook c6, the bishop's harassed and has to go to b8. Now black is tied down. He can never play rook takes d5 because of rook c8 check. So the king can now play king f1 so that there's no bishop a7 if rook b6. So now white prepares this final phase of trying to win that b5 pawn. Say bishop d6, now rook b b6, king e7. And now, you know, white can be cruel here and put the rook first on the seventh rank and then develop the position a bit more with king e2 and say h5, now bishop g6 and after bishop e7 white can now take the pawn very safely either b5 or h5 if, if black had really had to play h5 but um, say rook takes b5 here and white's clearly better so basically in this position it seems you know that um, queen b6 is a powerful alternative and uh, what would Kasparov have um, prepared here? I don't believe the line I showed you was Kasparov's line. Um, maybe Kasparov was preparing to sack the B pawn like this with a move like Queen E7 and expect the computer, pardon me, taking on A2 first. And now Queen E7, just expecting the computer to play queen takes b5 and now e4 has got dangerous threats you know like queen queen e5 so say here queen here a6 rook e8 you know black's got some counterplay potentially with this threat of queen e5 so it was all kind of cruelly um, snuffed out by Deeper Blue's um, Bishop E4. So say here, you know, it's difficult for White. So by Deeper Blue playing this Bishop E4, blockading that E pawn, he's not giving the computer rather, he's not giving Kasparov the chance for for sacrificing the B pawn to generate some counterplay. It's as if you know the computer, you know, started to play positionally. Now, so my question is, do you really think? The computer had advanced algorithms, you know, programmed into it to handle closed positions. You know, ha had it um, been told to play simple chess and avoid its calculations sometimes, if there was a move that blockaded, for example, 
the opponent's pawn and snuff out more counterplay. Well, actually, you know, Rivka did like uh, bishop e4 on about depth 11. Actually, um, and it, it is given as one of the main candidate moves. But uh, this this is a modern engine, you know. Would would that engine have really considered bishop e4? The line which it gives is um, like this. Rook C B eight and now either Rook A six or or King H two. Say Rook A six takes takes Queen D eight. Now say um King H two Rook B seven Queen E two and it's not completely clear how black is losing material. So um, let's go back to the game continuation though. After bishop e4, Kapsarov, you know, maybe he was psychologically really surprised by this positional move. And he exchanged on a2. So queen takes a2, and after queen d7, now queen a7 was played. And its position is difficult. And the game continued like this. So he's defending that b5 pawn. But now after queen a6, he's getting really tied down. So after queen c7, queen c6, black played queen b6 now. And the computer just played king f1. And it's getting really unpleasant now for black. Kasparov played rook b8. And after rook a6, Kasparov resigned. So why did he resign? Let's have a look. Say he took the queen, takes rook c8. Now check. And let's have a look. Rook c7, there's rook a8. And, you know, white at leisure now has got things like um, rook b8 or bishop d5 check. Say bishop f8. King f2, say. Bishop d6 again. King e3. Let, let's give black n null moves. So how is white breaking through? Say check. King e4. So marching the king all the way to e4. Now this h5 was designed to stop g4. So let's let's say, you know, black again did a null move. King d6. Well, there's rook takes f8. So, um, so black is really cramped here. In fact, running out of moves. So here, um, this looks as though Kasparov would be in Zugzwang in this variation. So maybe that's why you know he had enough after the um, continuation of this rook a6. You know he had resigned. So let's go back to that start position. And, you know, bishop e4, you know, is it really possible that the program was, was that advanced to, 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 instead of materialistically, it seemed, going in for queen b6, just basically stopped all of Kasparov's counterplay? So basically, by the way, you know, computers were, were thought to be, you know, very materialistic, and Kasparov had been studying them, and his r reasoning, perhaps, for thinking it would be materialistic. It's, it's just the way they think. They think in terms of candidate moves and not so much positional plans or snuffing out counterplay. All they see, you know, in chess is, you know, lots of candidate moves, which, you know, they love the maze of variations. And because, you know, they can see thousands, millions of positions so quickly, that's a very good method for them. And they have these basic, basic heuristics, these rules of thumb, which dictate things like, you know, what is the material balance here? What is the peace mobility here? And usually these are very, very concrete in nature, these rules of thumb. I think Ribka, my favorite engine, you know, they, they're trying to make it more positional. And in this position, you know, it does rate bishop e4 as one of the strongest moves. But uh, this is a very modern engine. Could deeper blue at that time Back in 1997, 
you know, have played this very positional move and avoided other tempting materialistic moves. So that's the big question. I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.